How excited is this? <laughs> this is very, very, very cool. It took three days to get everything through customs, but we finally got the batteries today, which means we can start this project that I've been excited about for a while and actually thinking about for quite some time. So what we're gonna do is we are going to replace the old lead acid batteries with lithium batteries. We are going to add this guy, which is a big, wow, three volt, 3000 volt amp or three uh, kilowatt inverter charger, sine wave inverter. And the main reason we're gonna do that is because then we're gonna attempt to get rid of propane on the boat. So I've had, you know, <laughs> so many problems like in every country you go to, there's a different filling adapter. You were carrying like an explosive gas around on the boat. It's just in general bulky and a hassle. So the idea is that we're going to replace the gas stove with an induction cooktop, which thing. should be a pretty cool deal. And there's a couple of really, really awesome things about this. First of all, we're getting rid of propane. Second of all, it's going to run directly off this inverter, so I don't have to fill up gas anymore. And uh, we're also going to add this uh, battery monitor to keep uh, charge of the lithium cells. So there's, there's definitely a few advantages to the lithium cells. And even though we're getting rid of propane and going to go with all electric cooking, I'm kind of betting that our generator time will either remain the same or even go down, even though we're gonna be consuming more power. Um, <clears throat> and the main reason for that is the lithium cells are extremely, extremely efficient. So, you know, when we're charging our lead acid cells, quite often, uh, if we're running one battery charger at 70 amps, it'll start out charging at 70 amps. And then after an hour, when it gets to a certain percent of charge, the charging current drops and drops and drops and drops. So we usually turn ours off when uh, it's charging like 15 amps or so, because at that point you're just running the generator and you're burning fuel that you're not really putting very much charge into the battery. So there's, there's a, a big uh, loss of efficiency in charging on like lead acid and AGM and gel cells. But the lithium cells should be able to take charge, like full charge, maximum, 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 and then it'll just stop charging. So this, this is our old bank of lead acid batteries that we put in in Madagascar. Uh, they're about two years old. They're still performing fine. They're still doing well. Um, but we're going to upgrade while we're here in Grenada. So this, each one of these is 100 amp hours. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So a total of 800 hours, amp hours capacity at 12 volts or 400 amp hours capacity at 24 volts. But one of the main problems with lead acid batteries is you can't use the full capacity of the bank. So on a regular basis out of this bank of eight, at the most to get the longest life and the most recharging cycles out of these batteries, you can only use about half. And most of the time we end up using about 30%. So imagine having a bank of eight batteries, but you can only use realistically use the charge that's in three of them, which is kind of a bummer. Um, but with the lithium batteries, we should be able to use uh, at least 80% of the charge in the batteries. So they're the same size. Uh, they're actually lighter. I think the lithium batteries are 13 kilos and these are 20 or almost 30 kilos. So they're less weight. Uh, and I do think we're gonna get maybe two to three times more capacity, which means we'll be able to go just that much longer without running the generator and still uh, not damage the cells. We should be able to get uh, at least 5,000 cycles out of the lithium batteries. So here they are, huh? Yeah, so these are the cells freshly cleared from customs. Uh, this is Justin from Transporter Energy. Hello. He's coming from the UK. <laughs> you can see the, look at this, look at the whiteness on the stack. <laughs> he hasn't been here quite long enough. No, not long enough yet. <laughs> I haven't cooked yet. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're working with Justin to install this on Delos to prove that like this sort of a concept works on a sailboat and we can put in lithium, put in a big inverter, get rid of gas, go with induction, and uh, hopefully get less generator running time to it. Definitely, yeah. definitely. You told me these have like a computer in them or they, something? They have a full um, computer system inside them, so they regulate everything to do with the battery. So they regulate everything to do with the heat, the charging, everything to do with the cells, and if there is a fault, then they will turn themselves off. 
until such time as the computer decides that the, the fault is gone and then they'll reset and they'll work again. Okay, cool. So uh, there's, there's the number of ways you can damage a lithium cell are too high a voltage. That's right. Too low a voltage, that's like right. taking too much charge out. Yes. Getting it too hot. That's right. So they're more susceptible to damage that way. That's and right. And so the computer says, okay, the voltage is too high. I'm disconnecting this that's battery. Right. Voltage yep. is too low. I'm going to disconnect. Temperature's getting too high. That's it. Uh, do the same thing. Yes, the computer system inside will regulate everything to do with the battery. And if a cell goes down and one cell's lower than any other cells in the battery, then all of the other power will shut off the other cells until that cell comes back up. So they all level back out. And once they level back out, then the battery will carry on charging. Is there anything else we should know about lithium cells? Um, well, the the way that the lithium works is totally different to a lead. Um, a lithium can take a lot of power and they can pull at a lot, a lot higher rate. And a lead battery, if you try and do what we're trying to do on this boat, then you would damage the um, lead batteries very, very quickly. Um, and the actual plates inside the batteries will start to separate. Uh, so first step is we're gonna start fitting these batteries and I think it's a pretty good idea to check the charge level so we know that they're all charged and at the same level and all giving us the right voltage before we put them in. So this one's 13.3. So that's good. Thirteen point two nine, so that's within up oh, thirteen point three, so that's exactly the same. That's what we want to see. They're all within uh, one tenth of a volt. No, one one hundredth of a volt, which I think is pretty good. Okay, so next step, uh, I need to shut down all the power to everything and turn off the breakers. So, fridge, freezer, gonna turn off all the lights. Off, water pump off. Turn off the instruments. Yay, we're gonna disconnect the boat. Ready? One, two, three. Boom. Boom. We're completely isolated now. So we should be able to disconnect these and get the new ones in now. After a lot of research, I found out that not all lithium batteries are created equal. Depending on where they're produced, you'll find different battery chemistries, production standards, and even testing. I decided to go with lithium iron phosphate. Life PO4 batteries have a slightly lower energy density than other chemistries, but are more stable because of it. Plus, they're 95% recyclable. I chose batteries manufactured in the USA, which means they conform to strict quality control and testing standards. These batteries in particular are even certified for air freight. All right, they fit in there pretty good, huh? They're so much lighter. It was really a chore carrying the lead acid ones out, but these ones are pretty sweet. Um, since we're on a 24 volt system and these are 12 volt batteries, what we do is we wire two batteries in series to get 24 volts. So this is the positive terminal of this one. This is the negative terminal. And so what we've done is mounted the batteries sort of opposite. So we have positive, negative, positive, negative. And then what we'll do is we'll connect these two together. So we'll get 12 volts plus 12 volts. And then on these two terminals, we'll get our 24 volts. So we actually have one, two, three, four, 24 volt batteries in essence. And then those are all wired together in parallel. They come together on these lugs and then that goes and feeds the rest of the boat. One. When you're doing this, is it ever any um, risk of getting shocked? Well, it's DC voltage and it's pretty low voltage. So if, if for me, if it was like 48 volts or above, I would worry about it. But at 12 volts or even 24 volts, like you'd literally have to bathe yourself in salt water and then touch a bunch of things wrong. I've, I've actually never been shocked doing this. The thing that I watch out for is I just tape always the, the positive ends and uh, because if you're hooking them up and you're hooking up differently you could perhaps have one negative end and then you could have another battery connected and then you could maybe arc i think it happened to be once on one of these uh, yep you can see the end of this one how it's just melted okay i will do this next step and then 
we'll go from there. Okay. Can you see that? Okay. 26.6 volts. Are these different to hook up or do you know how to hook them up? Is the same as the other one? Uh, the, this part is mostly the same. The part that's different is you really have to watch how you configure the charger, like the solar charger, uh, charge controller, the wind charge controller, and the battery charger have to be set very specifically for uh, the voltages for lithium batteries. The other thing we have to watch out for is uh, on lithium batteries, if, you know, these guys will disconnect themselves in the event of a problem with the batteries. So let's say that something happened with the battery charger while we're charging the batteries. If the voltage gets too high and all of these batteries disconnect themselves at the same time to protect themselves, now you have no load on the system and you've got a battery charger putting out a bunch of energy and it can actually cause a spike in the system that can damage uh, everything else that's hooked up to it. Uh, it can be a, a, a voltage spike that's too high. So one of the things that I've been reading about is uh, uh, using the starter battery as sort of a uh, uh, a safety battery. So for example, you you have a, a battery to battery uh, charger that you'd hook up here. It would step down from 24 volts to 12 volts. And that way, if all of these batteries disconnect, you still have this the starter battery here that sort of acts as a, um, almost like a cushion. It absorbs that spike initially to prevent damage to all the other electronics on the boat that might be sensitive to voltage changes. Oh, this is the, the tough part because it's freaking steamy hot in here. There's not a lot of room to maneuver and this thing is a beast. It is heavy in trying to maneuver it up onto the wall while screwing in the, the screws is pretty difficult. But I've got it up there. Okay, so there's the new inverter charger. Can charge at 70 amps. This is the old Victron charger that can charge at 100 amps. And here's the Master Volt charger that can charge at 80 amps. So if we can, if I can get all these wired up and the batteries can take it, we can put in 250 amps, which uh, is a lot. We should be able to top those batteries up really, really quick if the generator and everything can handle it. What are you up to now, right? This is kind of the last piece I have to install, and it's the new voltage monitor. So here's the old Link 10 that just gave us our voltage and our current, and we've got this new Victron one, which is going to give us a whole bunch more stuff and is configurable for lithium ion batteries. Um, and it's Bluetooth connected, which I think is cool. So we could see like charge and stuff on our phone if we wanted. So I've got to pull the new wires through, put this new, um, uh, what is this called? Can't remember. Thingy. Thingy. Shunt, it's called a shunt. <laughs> Installed over by the batteries. And then uh, basically the power goes through here and they use this shunt to monitor uh, the current and then the current gets, the information gets transmitted over this wire to the back of the gauge. And then it shows up hopefully cool numbers here. <laughs> cool. So that's, I think the size is the same. I think they probably do that on purpose so that you can when switch When do they these ever out. do that on purpose? That's amazing. I know. <laughs> these guys really want to replace this one, or this one with this one, I guess, right? Wires. <laughs> a few wires. A few wires. What is that wire? Boat speed. Nobody got time for that wire. <laughs> what? Just an extra wire. Oh, it's in there pretty good. This is like old wires. Old, old wires. <laughs> it shouldn't even be here. Alright, it took me a few hours of mangling with the wiring, but it's in. It looks real nice. Check it out. Look at that! We've got voltage, 26.51. We've got our charge percentage, amp hours, watts, and current. Uh, so there's that. Voltage. What's also cool is it works over Bluetooth too. Really? So we've got our voltage, current, uh, consumed amp hours, uh, we 
which is pretty nice if you want to look at that. And you can look at the history, although we don't have any history yet because we haven't done anything. But we're getting there. I've got to configure now the... Uh, I've got this configured for lithium ion. So some settings you have to set. I have to now configure the solar charge controller. The charge controller for the wind generator. I have to configure those for lithium. And then we'll install the induction cooktop. Cool. So, getting there. Getting there. Look at all the wire and I removed like all that out there. <laughs> this extra. It's like a wire pile. And all these wires. This is the old wires from the old Link 10. So that's out of there. Okay, it's been a long day, but I'm about to turn the power back on to the boat and hopefully things will go good. What? Dun, dun, dun. What does that mean? No sparks, no explosions. Okay, breaker one, breaker two. See the lights and shit are working now. That's alive. Uh, now what I should do is unplug from dock power and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Nothing turned off. No shit, that's cool. That worked. So what happened is I unplugged the dock power, which would simulate the generator turning off and the inverter has a pass through. So when you're putting AC voltage into it, it passes it through just like normal. So if the generator is making power or if the dock is making power, but the second it loses power, the inverter automatically switches on. Yeah. So it's a seamless sort of transfer. So that's different from the other one we had. Yeah, because yeah, the other one we'd have to turn that the inverter on. That is different, huh? Yeah. Wow. So that's cool. So now we're running only off the lithium batteries. Cool. <laughs> good job, Bry. Well, what are we? We're Baja. pulling 12 amps. That's good. <laughs> That's, That's cool. Amazing. Test number one. The microwave that hasn't run in like a year. <laughs> what will happen if it's too much? It shouldn't be too much. It's a 3000 watt inverter. Start? Yeah, start. Oh. 20 amps, 50 amps, 60 amps, 70 amps. Cool. Using 1.8 kilowatts of power. Yeah, how, yeah. How, how soon you want to have Hold this on, done? We, we got to do the whole camera thing. <laughs> 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 what was your name again? Irvin, man. Irvin, I'm Brian. Nice to meet okay, you, Brian. Okay, so man. this is Irvin, and what we're talking about right now is he's a carpenter. Yeah. And we're yeah. going to build a, a mechanism to install our induction stove and replace the gas cooktop. Well, maybe we'll try to get a piece of mahogany for you to give it a kind of finish you're looking for. That would be cool. Yeah. Three quarter inch or something? A three quarter inch. Yeah. And how long do you think it'll what take? What time frame? That's what I'm talking about. No. <laughs> <laughs> how, how long are you working tonight? <laughs> nah, you got to put the No, no, no. It's your time. Yeah. Right, we no, decided no. to run a little test here to see the power of the induction stove compared with the gas cooktop. Uh, so basically we're going to put a liter of water in each and heat it up until the whistle starts to blow and then time each one and see how much current it takes. There it goes. So six minutes and 24 seconds. That's crazy. That goes way over, huh? Gimbaled induction. Cool. High five. Nice job, Good job Brad. Ready? Mm -hmm. Power on, uh, power on, and start. Boom. How much power are we using for that? About 47 amps altogether. But it's kicking off like no heat but compared it's, to... But there's no heat, real, yeah. which is key on a boat. And we're not and using, we're not any using gas. propane. That's awesome. Oh, oh. oh. okay, it's one minute slower. Seven minutes and 25 seconds. Boiling water using the harness power from the sun and wind is a huge step for us in removing our dependency on propane, even if I have to wait a bit longer for my tea. And the fact that we're not heating up the galley with waste heat anymore is a major bonus. We're going to use and abuse the system for a few months and report back with our results. feel it I can feel it <sighs> hey guys thanks for watching the video I hope you learned as much as I did if you'd like to learn more about the system that we installed on Delos the link is below and if you did like the content give it a thumbs up it helps us to know if we're on the right track and making the right type of videos questions or comments put them below I'll do my best to answer